Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about sizing your coin rings. Get it right, you're going to have a happy customer. Get it wrong, it means extra work and customers who are not happy with you. So don't go away, you're not going to want to miss this one. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. That's right, as I said, today we're going to be talking about sizing. This is going to be another episode in my up close and personal look at the details of making a coin ring. We're going to try and really hone in on what it takes to make a good coin ring. And by request, today we're going to be talking about sizing. So, for today's demonstration, we're going to be working on a Morgan Silver Dollar. I'm going to show you how I get to my final customer size. All right, you're not going to want to miss this, so let's go ahead and get right to work. All right, so when we talk about sizing, my process begins before I touch any of the tools. All right, it starts when I'm having a conversation with the customer or trying to make a sale. I wouldn't try to make a size five out of a Morgan silver dollar any more than I would try and make a size 16 out of a quarter. Okay, I just, I've made a seven out of a, a Morgan and hated doing it. I don't think it looks right. I don't like making them. I don't like selling them. Um, they just don't look right to me. So I don't like that. So I'm already thinking of size. I have to think of size when I'm comparing using a Walking Liberty as opposed to a Morgan, or a quarter, or whatever. So I need to be thinking about size right up front, okay? What's a reasonable size range? What can I do if I really push it? If the customer's really, really asking for that, that size six in a Morgan, can I do it? Probably can, should I? No, I won't. I, I won't do a six. I don't like doing a seven, and you're going to have to convince me to do it. So I'm thinking size before I even touch the tools. Now, in today's demonstration, it's a fairly straightforward one. I'm going to be using a Morgan, which is the most popular coin for ringing. And I'm going to be going for a size 12. And I'm going to double check that, which leads me to my next point. Measure twice, caught once, okay? I'm working off the top of my head here, but before I punch a hole in this coin, I'm going to confirm what size I'm trying to get to. But either way, this is going to be a wheelhouse coin. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. And I'm letting you know right up front, you need to be thinking about size before you do a single thing to this coin. And that's what I'm doing, figuring out what I got to do. So now that I kind of have an idea, I can go ahead and start to turn this into a coin ring. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, this is my order sheet, and you can see, uh, let's see here if I can show it to you right here. 11 and a half. That's what I'm talking about when I say measure twice, cut once. Okay, if I'd gone straight to 12, I'd be wrong, okay? I knew it was around 12, but it's an 11 and a half. I want to make sure I get it right. Okay, so I've made my ring and I'm at the end of my folding process. So how do I know when I'm done folding? Well, I'm done folding 
when the coin walls are touching the walls of the pusher, okay? I am officially done with the folding process. And this is where I come back to figuring out what next in sizing, all right? What I like to do is I like to get a kind of an idea of where I'm at. And I'm just shy of 12 and a quarter. Now I have decisions I have to make. I have to first of all, know what size I'm going for, and I'm going for an 11 and a half. Now, if I run this through my large Swedish wrap die, okay, if I run it through here, and it comes out the bottom, I'm gonna get like a 10, okay? Well, I know that in this ring, I wanna make a fat tire. And to get a fat tire look, you need to go about two to two and a half sizes above your target size. So, to get to my 11 and a half, I'm gonna to have to go to about a 13 and a half or a 14. Now, like I said, right now, I'm sitting at a 12 and a quarter, so I'm not even there on the cut side, all right? So, for my purposes, running it out the bottom of the Swedish wrap, it's out, I'm not gonna do that. Now, what I could do is I could run it partially through the Swedish wrap just to bring the top in, okay? Bring the reeded edge in and get the ring to look a little bit more like a ring and get it a little more equal to the cut side. But because I'm still pretty far off on the cut side, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kneel this and I'm gonna go to the ring stretcher and I'm gonna try to get to about my 14 on the cut side and then I'll take a look and see what the ring looks like. Right now, if I were to try to put this in a reduction die, you see how wide of an angle that is? That would be really difficult for me to push through a reduction die. I'd probably screw the ring up. So right now I need to get it a little more parallel. All right, and I'm gonna do that on the ring stretcher for this particular ring. But these are the decisions that you have to make on the fly. You have to know what you're doing. Now, if I was going for a straight-sided ring, okay, because I'm already above the 11 and a half all the way around, I would absolutely run this through the Swedish wrap die. I really hate having these cars drive by here, but I'm sorry about that, nothing I can do about it. But anyhow, a straight sided ring, I'm going straight to the target size, and so I could run this through the Swedish wrap die, but I don't do a lot of those. Okay, most of them are, oh, here comes my friend. Here he is, here's the idiot stupid vehicle. Dude, it's called a muffler, right? A muffler. I hate him. I really do. I really hate him. Okay. Having said that, listen to that. He's not even near my house anymore. He's like two blocks away. What a jerk. Okay. Anyhow. And I drive a muscle car, okay? But really with that, it's a shit box. You should see this thing. It is a complete piece of shit. I'm sure he has um, classic rod license plates on it. What an idiot. Okay, anyhow, I'm not making it straight walled, so I can't go straight to the side, so I'm not going to use the switch wrap on this ring. I'm going to go to the ring stretcher. Let's get over there. Okay, here I am at the ring stretcher. Now, when you're using the ring stretcher, this is a got splines here. Now if you just drop your ring down on here and start going ham, um, it can misshape in your ring. So with every pull of the handle, I turn the ring ever so slightly just to make sure I get even expansion all the way around. Now, this, this mandrel here can ab absolutely destroy the inside detail of your ring and you would need to protect it using something like this or some paper towels. But right now, because the only contact point is right there at the cut edge, I don't need to do that. So let's go ahead and get going here. We'll start to stretch this sucker out a little bit. And I kind of guide it down. And I, I don't go full pulls. I go little bits at a time. Uh, 
know, it's important that you, when you start to feel too much resistance, you stop. Especially, this is a really old coin, and I don't want to split this sucker, okay? So let's take a quick look on the sizing mandrel and see what we ended up getting to. Remember, I was at uh, uh, 12 and 3 quarters, and now I'm at a 15, and I need to get to an 11 and a half, so I don't need to go any bigger on that. All right, so I'm good there. That's all I need to do. Now, let's get a close-up of this here. Okay, you see, I still have a pretty good little cone shape here. Okay, and I probably could get rid of that in a reduction die, but now I am thinking my best bet would be to squeeze this down in the Swedish wrap just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, before I start just shoving this ring through the Swedish wrap dies willy-nilly, I'm going to look and see what's really going on. I'm going to see how far the coin sits down into the die. I'm going to get my pusher and figure out how far it will push it down. And I'm going to kind of have some kind of a plan here. Because the last thing on earth I want to do is push it past the size I want to get to. Because the bottom line is you don't want to be moving this metal around more than you need to. So don't just jump in there and just start squeezing things without thinking them out. But now that I've got everything kind of figured out in my head, I can go ahead and wrap the coin and shove it through the die. In my opinion, honestly, the Swedish wrap is the biggest thing to ever hit coin ring making. It can help you get your sizes straight. It can help you get sidewalls straight. It can help you fix wonky coins. Swedish wrap rocks. Here you can see we're looking pretty good, but I think we can get a lot better. So I'm going to push it down a little bit further into the Swedish wrap die. This isn't a video about the Swedish wrap process, but I will share this information. I use Jason's Works Swedish wrap die set. I use Blue Monster thread tape, and I use pushers made of Delrin by Neil Pippet. I'll put links below so you can find all of this stuff. It works great together.
Okay, after two passes through the Swedish rep, you can see I can go ahead now and start to think about putting in the fat tire and adjusting the final size. I'm really close to being where I want to be. Okay, so as you can see, sizing is kind of a feel type thing. You have to kind of make decisions on the fly, evaluating where you're at after every action you take. So I didn't think I was going to need to Swedish wrap this at all. But you'll notice after I did the ring stretcher, I did do a Swedish wrap. And that is simply because I reevaluated where I was at after the ring stretcher and said, my best next move is to bring in the reeded edge. And the best way to do that is with the Swedish wrap. So it's all about paying attention to what you're doing and reevaluating where you're at with every step. So now I can get a really good idea of where I'm at. And the bottom should still be right around the 15 where it was after I did this because I didn't really squeeze any of that down in the Swedish wrap. All I did was squeeze the top down, which is now just over a 15. It's like a 15 and a quarter. So you can see I'm very, very close to being where I need to be to get a Swedish, uh, to get the, the fat tire look that I'm looking for. So right now it's just a matter of bringing the sides in to get my final size. Now there's one last consideration you need to do when you're uh, thinking about a fat tire on a Swedish wrap uh, on a Morgan, and that is the reeded edge. Okay, right now it feels pretty smooth, but as I bring the fat tire in, this is gonna get a lip, and it's gonna be uncomfortable for your customer, okay? And so I leave an allowance for this of about a quarter to a half a size that I'm gonna take out of there. That's going to soften this, make the ring more comfortable, and help me fine-tune the size of the ring. All right? So right now what this ring needs is it needs to be brought down to its final size and given its fat tire look. So to do that, we're going to hit the hydraulic press again. We're going to need the ring, and this is going to be your best friend during this process because, like I've said, Measure twice, cut once. All right, let's go to the press. You hear that? Can you hear that? Those boys can make all the noise they want. That's the sound of freedom from Nellis Air Force Base. So they don't need a muffler. I salute you guys. Thank you for everything you guys are doing out there. All right, let's get to it. Okay, I'm super close. I'm going to finish up with dies. This is my standard Jason's work die, and his standard dies come with a slope to the inner wall of 17 degrees. This is one that I'm going to use. It fits my coin very nicely. But I also have a special Jason's work die with a 25 degree slope to the inner walls. This will allow me to put more fat tire into the ring and not have to worry about the side detail of the ring being obliterated by the die. So I'm going to go ahead and begin with the 17 degree die and I'm going to see how the ring fits. And it looks like I've got a pretty good fit here. Got some room to press it down. And whenever I'm doing this, lots and lots of Pepe Lube. From experience, I can tell that there's not a lot of room here, so I'm going to just go until the die hits the top of my press. But otherwise, I would inch up on this thing.
All right, this ring is really starting to look very, very good now. And again, I'm checking my size. Always checking the size of the ring. Alright, after taking a look at everything, I realized I need to bring the reeded edge in a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more Pepe Lube and put it back in the die. This time I flipped the die over so I have a little more room to press. But again, I'm still going to go very, very slowly and methodically. I don't want to just squeeze this thing too far. Because then I'm just going to have to stretch it back out, and that's just a waste of time and extra stress on the ring. Alright, this ring is looking great. I'm right near the size I'm looking for. So let's take a check. And uh, here you can see I'm landing right at about 11 and a half. Maybe a little bit short of it. So now I can put the finishing touches on this ring. So I'm right about the size I want to be on the reeded edge. I've got the look that I'm going for. I now want to bring in the cut edge. So I have to push on the reeds. To protect them, I'm going to use a piece of shop towel. The cut edge will come in pretty easily. It's pretty thin compared to the reeded edge. So be very, very careful here. Don't overshoot your mark. The way the ring sat in this die, I knew I could go right to the very end. And so I did. And here's what I've got. That looks pretty, pretty good. I'm really, really happy with that. Alright, this ring is looking amazing. So I'll check the size. Right at 11.5 where I wanted to be and always always make sure you check the ring both directions okay so what I got going here is I have my ring and it's right at 11 and a half and it's got a really nice look to it I could sell it exactly like this and not do anything but I want to give it a little more fat tire look that was my intention that's what I'm gonna do uh, and as far as the sizing, the key has been keeping a track on what I'm doing. So, you're going to get two sizes on your rings based on which way you put it on the mandrel. If you put it on reeded side down, you're going to get what's on the reeded side because this is so thick. And I can already feel that ridge I was telling you about earlier. All right. The other side, the cut side is so thin, it's a completely different size. So let me put it on read it side. See if I can show you here. Let's try and bring it in close here. Can you see that? It's not even touching the mandrel. Okay? I'm at my target size of 11 and a half. Okay? But the cut side is not touching the mandrel. Okay, and that's going to be a standard thing as you make your coin rings. You've got to understand that you have to size it to the reeded side because it's always going to be smaller than the cut side. Now, I'm at an 11 and a half, but what did I tell you? I told you I'm going to file this ridge off of here. 
And that's gonna change this size. Okay, it's gonna change at a good quarter of a, uh, uh, a size. So it's gonna go from 11 and a half to at least 11 and three quarters. Okay, so I'm not really at my correct size. But because I'm so close, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file this down a little bit now then I'm gonna put a little bit more fat tire in it. Then I'm gonna check the size again. And then I'll tweak it either by squeezing the ends in or bringing them out on the ring stretcher. So first, let's get to filing this lip out of here, okay? I was at an 11 and a half, but after some filing, you can see I'm a lot closer to 12. But that's fine. It just gives me room to bring the reeded edge in a little bit more. Okay, so you saw that uh, I did, in fact, gain an entire quarter of a size by filing that inside edge. And if you have a lot you want to take off of there and you've got fat tire going, you can also use your deburring tool to help bring that down a little bit uh, but you have to do it on a fat fat tire one because uh, you don't want the deburring tool to mar up the inside of your ring so just be careful if you decide to use that option all right well now that I've got it really really close I'm gonna put away the 17 degree uh, die and I'm gonna use the 25 degree die for the rest of this and what I want to do is I want to get the reeded edge the way I want it first. And the reason for that is it's the hardest to get right. It's super easy to match up the cut edge. So we're gonna get the reeded edge done. I'm uh, about a quarter of a, a size away. I'm probably gonna end up overshooting this, but we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna take a look at my, my 25 degree die and it looks like I can use this side of it. Plenty of room here. So I'm gonna lube up the reeds, put it in here. Now a quarter of a size is not a lot, okay? This is not gonna take much. I usually get somewhere about a quarter to a half on a full pull on the handle, uh, maybe two. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit, I'm gonna go about a half a pull here. Right to about there, and I'm gonna see what I got. Remeasure it. I don't mind if I go over a little bit. All right, I'm dead on. Maybe a hair too small. No, I'm dead on. Let me show it to you here. Let me bring it over. Let me bring it over to you. Okay. That's the 12, that's 11 and three quarters, that's 11 and a half. Okay, and you see I've got that bow on the reeded edge that I want, but the back edge doesn't match it up, so now I'll go ahead and do that. All right, again, I just want a little bit here, but I can go a little bit more on the cut edge because it's a bigger size. So I'm gonna go whatever I have to to make it look right. So put that in there. Make sure you protect the reeds. A piece of folded shop towel works good. You could use a piece of cardboard, a piece of rubber. Yeah, I always use the shop towels. All right, I'm tight there. Okay, this one, I'm probably gonna go a full press of the handle here. All right, and I'm right about there. I'll take a look at it. Careful when you take that off. You got all that uh, lube on here and it makes it stick there and you can shoot the ring across the room. All right, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. All 
right. Make sure I got a good size here. 11 and a half, 11 and a half. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so there you have it. I have taken this coin ring and I have sized it dead on. Now, the things that are important to remember is every ring is going to be different, okay? I can't tell you to get to a 12, you have to pull the handle this many times. I can't, I can't give you those kind of specifics. That's why this is a bit of an art, okay? Because the ring and the craftsman have to work in harmony to get the right size. Start thinking about your sizing right at the beginning of your project. Have a general idea, but be flexible and reevaluate after every step. All right, that's going to do it for today. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, as always, put them down below and I will try to answer them. I do read all my comments and I try to get back to you if I can. Um, I don't know what I have on tap next. I know I've got some requests for uh, some more clear powder coating stuff over patina that may be coming soon. I really don't know. All I do know is it's time for me to get the heck out of here. So this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying goodbye and be good.